Hello, Dr. Huang and everyone who watched this presentation. Today, we are going to talk about the environment object, which is the coral reef, and the related microorganisms, which is Endozoicomonas, Pseudomondas, and Zoocentale. My name is Kok Fai, and my groupmate will be Jun Yong, Natasha, Angeline, and Kenneth. What are microorganisms? As we know, microorganisms can't be seen with the naked eye. And because of that, microscope is required to find out the existence of microorganisms. There are a total of six major types of microorganisms, which is bacteria, archaea, protozoa, algae, fungi, and viruses. All these microorganisms have already existed on Earth billions of years ago before we human and also animal evolved. The survivability of microorganisms is strong enough for them to survive almost everywhere which include ocean, volcano, forest, salt lakes, mine, atmosphere, and also in human body. Now, we are going to talk about our environment object which is coral reef. Coral reef is known as the rainforest of the sea and because of that, it is also known as the marine ecosystem. Coral reefs are formed by colonies of coral polyps held together by calcium carbonate exoskeletons. They are mostly being found in tropical water because it is warm and shallow, but there is also some coral reefs that survive in deeper and cooler waters. The four major types of coral reef will be fringing, barrier, platform, and also atoll. One of the coral reef system will be the Great Barrier Reef which is located at Australia. Coral reef is important in the marine ecosystem because even it only occupies less than 0.1% of the entire ocean area and yet they have already acted as a shelter to 25% of marine animals. For the marine animals, coral reef provide food and shelter for them to survive and even spawning or breeding ground for them to give birth. For the coastline protection, coral reefs are able to absorb wave energy so that small animals won't get flushed off by the wave and also reduce the impact of storm and erosion. They are also participate assist in nutrient recycling which include carbon and nitrogen fixing. Back to the point, we know that microorganisms can be survived anywhere and now we are going to talk about the microorganisms that can be found abundantly on coral reefs. There are a total of three microorganisms that can be found inside the coral reefs, which is Endozoicomonas, Pseudomondas, and also Zoocendale. All of these microorganisms are very important to the coral reefs as they have their own duty to maintain the healthy of coral reefs. Hi. My name is Natasha and I will present about the first microorganism for this topic which is Zooxanthella. So Zooxanthella is a colloquial term for single core dinoflagellated that are able to live inside in symbiosis with diverse marine intervertebrates. So the domain for Zooxanthella is Eukaryota and the kingdom is Chromalveolata, superphylum is Alveolata, phylum is Dinoflagellata, genus is Symbionum. Symbiodynum and there are some genus are uh, also known for, uh, as Amphibidinium and other taxa which are not yet identified that may similar with endosymbion affinitis. And the species for and the species for this Zantella is Symbiodynum californium. Introducing Zooxanthella. So Zooxanthella is a unicellular golden brown algae that live either in the water column as plankton or symbiotically inside the tissue of other organisms. Symb it is symbiosis with diverse marine intervertebrate, including demos, demos sponge, coral, jellyfish, and nudie branch. Is it photosynthesis organism that contain chlorophyll A and chlorophyll C as well as dinoflagellated pigmum, peridim and didosan, didonosantin and it give coral their beautiful appearance color. So the roles of Zantella in coral reef 
uh, to provide carbon needed for the coral since it's done the photosynthesis so it will produce carbon dioxide it also providing energy via the photosynthesis it's take up nutrient released by the coral metabolism such as nitrogen and carbon dioxide and it's involved in coral bleaching my name is Jun Yong, and today I'll be introducing our next genus of bacteria found in coral reefs, which is Endozoicomonas. Endozoicomonas is a relatively new discovery of bacteria genus, as it was first proposed in 2007. It is from the phylum Pseudomonadota, from the class Gamma proteobacteria, from the order Oceanospirillus, and from the family Halesiae. Today we'll be focusing on the three species of Endozoicomonas found in coral reefs, which are Montipore, Gorgonicola and Acropori. So, endozygomonas bacteria are gram negative marine bacteria, hence, they typically contain a flagella for motility as they swim around in the ocean. They are aerobic bacteria, which means they require oxygen for cellular respiration, but they can also be facultative and aerobic, which means they will thrive in the presence of oxygen, but when oxygen levels are low, they will switch to fermentation instead. So, these bacteria are rod shaped. And as they mostly inhabit warm tropical waters, where most coral reefs are found, they have a symbiotic relationship with the corals. So they are found on the soft epithelial tissues of shallow and deep sea corals such as Plexora and Acropora. Next, I'll be introducing the general roles of endozycomonas in coral reefs. Firstly, it is for nutrient uptake and growth. Endozycomonas bacteria are involved in the nitrogen and carbon recycling. Although most do not have the genes for direct nitrogen fixing, they can still reduce nitrate into nitrite and then to ammonia, which is then secreted into the ocean. The secreted ammonia would support the growth of many marine life, including the corals, especially in nutrient-poor parts of the ocean. They are also involved in the methane and sulfur cycling to produce carbon for growth and survival of the corals. Lastly, endozycomonas bacteria can synthesize amino acids such as alanine and leucine, as well as different vitamins for the growth of coral reefs. Besides nutrient uptake and growth, endozoicomonas bacteria is also an indicator of the overall coral health. As they contain anti-pathogenic properties, endozoicomonas bacteria would protect the corals from infections by competing with the pathogens present in the ocean. These are just the general roles of the endozoicomonas in the coral reefs, as their specific role is still yet to be determined. Thank you, Jun Yong. My name is Kenneth Wong and I'll be talking about Pseudomonas. What are Pseudomonas? Pseudomonas are one of the few bacteria that lives in coral reefs and without them, the coral reefs will not survive. Pseudomonas is a type of bacteria that is found commonly in an environment such as soil and water. Its domain is known as the bacteria. The phylum is known as the Pseudomonadota. Class is known as the Gamma proteobacteria. The order is known as the Pseudomonadalis. The family is known as the Pseudomonas desiae. The genus is known as the Pseudomonas migella, 1894. The species is known as the Pseudomonas pyocyanae, also known as uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, as their common name. Introducing Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas are usually a gram-negative bacteria with rod shape, and their size will span from 0.5 to 0.8 micrometer by 1.5 to 3 micrometer. They are commonly known to be asporogenous, meaning that they don't produce spores, and they are also commonly known for, uh, for it to be monoflagellated, meaning that they only have one flagella. They can be found in soil and water, but usually they prefer to live in saline conditions, in the oceans or maybe sea water. So, what are the functions of Pseudomonas? Pseudomonas are known for its metabolic versatility. They have the ability to colonize a wide range of ecological niches such as rhizosphere, water environments, uh, and animal hosts, including humans, where it can cause severe infections. But what about coral reefs? What do they do? In coral reefs, they take part in a process called nitrogen fixation. And why do they do that? It is to maintain the stability of the whole coral reef system. It also takes part in the degradation of an in of the organic sulfur metabolite called the dimethyl sulfur sulfonylpropionate known as the DMSP for short this product this uh, reaction
production will be broken down into uh, other products such as dimethyl sulfate, sulfite, and DMS is suspected to take part in the climate feedback loop that could help counteract the global warming, meaning uh, less pollution. It is also uh, used in production of antibiotics uh, and coral reef plants and animals are important sources of new medicines being developed to treat cancer, arthritis, human bacterial infections, Alzheimer's disease, heart diseases, viruses and other diseases. So what are the impacts of coral reefs to humans? They are natural protectors, uh, meaning that they protect coastlines from storms and erosion. Without them, uh, we will have a lot of global warming and humans will suffer. They provide jobs for local communities and offer opportunities for recreation. They are also sources of food and new medicines. And over half a billion of people depend on coral reefs for food, income and protection. Fishing, diving and snorkeling on and near reefs benefit local businesses as well. I will now pass the time to my groupmate Angeline. I'm Angeline and I'll be presenting the rest of the slides. Coral reefs are dying. Relatively small amounts of change have resulted in major biological impact on coral reefs. As you guys may know, coral reefs are sensitive to pH and temperature changes. And for ages, climate change has increased the ocean's temperatures. This is terrible because these corals have actually adapted to live in a specific temperature range. So when the ocean's temperature gets too hot for a prolonged period of time, the corals can bleach and will eventually die. This phenomenon is known as coral bleaching, where corals expel microorganisms leaving behind their white exoskeleton. Ocean acidification decreases the ocean's pH caused, um, and this is caused by rising levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, usually um, from the burning of fossil fuels, for example. What actually happens um, between carbon dioxide and the corals is that the carbon dioxide is absorbed by seawater, setting in motion chemical reactions to produce bicarbonate and carbonate ions. Coral polyps bring in the seawater which contains the three ions which are bicarbonate, carbonate, and calcium ions um, into a calcifying space which is found between their cells and their um, ex uh, the surface of their existing skeleton and then they will then pump out hydrogen ions to produce more carbonate ions which will bind with calcium to make calcium carbonate which is essential for the formation of their skeleton but um, the oceans absorb excess carbon dioxide so there are more hydrogen um, bicarbonate ions but fewer carbonate and calcium ions which makes it harder for the corals to form their skeletons which cause decay and deaths of coral reefs. As you may tell, without these microorganisms, for example, zooxanthellae, which occupies the primary producer niche that fixes carbon dioxide to release energy and oxygen for utilization, coral reefs would be unable to produce nutrients for reef organisms. Besides that, they would be susceptible to diseases. Coral diseases generally occur in response to biological stresses such as um, pH and temperature changes, for example, which removes the microorganisms causing coral reefs to bleach. Besides that, uh, the loss of these microorganisms will not only lead to the loss of um, marine habitat, but also the loss of 
shoreline protection which when all of this is happening coastal fishing industries would also collapse these are the references that we use in this presentation And that's all from us. Thank you.